Hello everyone, Rob here with a quick video today because I've just been completely swamped with other work. Uh, Strong Track is still coming along nicely though for another release this month, hopefully, but nothing to show in a full video just yet. So instead I thought I'd introduce you to another aspect of this project, at least for me, which is the means to get head-mounted footage. Now as you can plainly see, this is just a crude prototype. You can see just a bit of the cereal box print here but I think it proves the point quite well. So this is a Raspberry Pi Zero, which costs about £10 or $10, depending on where you are, and other currencies as well, of course. Uh, but then we have some ribbon cables, and then at the end of this rather stylish set of wooden rulers, we have what the Pi Hut refers to as the Zero Cam. And this is a camera module that is a great deal smaller and lighter than the normal camera module you get for the Pi. And this is actually a wide-angle lens as well. So in the past I've tried using Pi cameras with phone lenses, adapters and things, but they're just too heavy and awkward. So what we have instead now is a lightweight wide-angle lens for £15. So we have £25 worth of parts, I guess maybe £30 if you include like the ribbons, uh, and the adapter here and the postage and, and, and so on and we have that mounted on a frame of some kind in this case again the cereal box and the rulers but due to the lightweight nature of the camera even with it at the end of the arm we don't get too much swinging motion so it actually it becomes a viable way to have a head mounted camera then we have a power cable running to uh, the Pi and then going from there to a battery pack and the Pi draws next to no power really so any pack will do I've been using just this very small lightweight one here and then to actually trigger the recording, we just have the Pi turned on. We have it in a sort of headless mode, which means no monitors plugged in. And then we can just send a command over the network to have it start recording. We can do that whenever we want, for however long we want. And uh, and of course, this has Wi-Fi built in, so it's all very it's all very doable. So that's recorded video with, I guess, what you might call the Model A. And if you were to have maybe five or six actors in a scene, you could you know relatively cheaply kit them out with each, and then you have that, that facial motion reference. But then we also have a slightly more expensive, but also more exciting, I guess what you could call Model B, which swaps out the Pi mounted here for an adapter that converts the ribbon cable to HDMI. And it's not an actual HDMI signal, but it's just using the literal copper wires and then converts that back into the ribbon cable uh, here to then plug into a full-blown Raspberry Pi 4. Now this would be in some sort of housing, I guess, that could be strapped to the waist, but why would we want to do that? Well, I'm pretty sure if things are multi-threaded, the Pi 4 has enough processing power to run the same machine learning models as the StrongTrack application does in, in real time. And if so, we can then just stream those values very easily over the network, much easier than with stream video, which Pis struggle with, and then have StrongTrack on the other half, on a different computer, then throw that over to the Unreal Engine or Blender or whatever we want to use, and then we actually have the potential of real-time wireless headcams, because of course this can be battery powered too. I suppose I probably shouldn't use models as signifiers because of course the Raspberry Pi has models, but I digress. So what next? Well, thanks to a couple more donations since the last video, I've been able to start putting together the beginnings of a website for StrongTrack and all the other associated things. And part of that will be documenting the various means of putting headcams like this together. As we're seeing here, the entry level would be maybe £30 or so, but you could also have like a series of upgrades for a bit more money. For example, say a 3D printed arm instead of the rulers and the cardboard, and that's probably what I'll be doing next, for example. I'll also be slowly working through the proofs of concepts on the real-time streaming Model B over the coming month or so, but the Model A is pretty much good to go if you're in for a bit of crafting, just because the Pi Zero is pretty much good to go with recording video, really. Which about wraps up this video. I just want to say thanks again to the couple of people who made donations since the last video and, and anyone who's ever made a donation. Obviously, it really helps make this stuff possible. Uh, makes me able to set aside time and funds for things such as purchasing domains and so on that are just going to help keep this project going along as nicely as it can. I also want to apologize for not having quite as much time to respond to comments this past week with all that's going on with my other work. But once I post this, I'll be trying to go back through and see what needs responding to. I really do appreciate all the nice things people are saying, as well as all the critical things people are saying, obviously, because this is very buggy. I don't necessarily recommend that everyone download this right now because it is pre-release stuff. But for those people who are able to have uh, the time to give feedback on that stuff, it's really helpful. So, yeah, thanks very much. I'll see you in a couple of weeks, hopefully. Uh, fingers crossed. It's going to be pretty intense 
with all the work I'm doing on my other, uh, the other work I'm doing. Um, but yeah, thanks again. If you find this interesting or helpful, do consider subscribing, all that stuff. Uh, it really helps keep me motivated to keep on going. So yeah, I hope you're all having a good October and uh, have a nice day.